Oh, I'm home and sober. You think I'm a lousy lush? Look, I want a nice quiet bar. You cause me any more trouble and I have the cops. Oh, you and your sleazy gin mill. Who needs it? My credit's good in the best hotels in town. Oh, you got a cheeky boy, She was a quicksilver star in a celluloid heaven. If a woman could sell her soul to achieve such fame, what wouldn't she do to get it back? Poor Rose, that was all she wanted, to relive the past. And those who loved her, Frank Clyde, for instance, could do nothing to stop her. But the comeback trail can lead to strange and sinister places to a lonely garden and to a night of terror. It can even lead to the face of a painted doll. But the comeback trail is a journey without maps, as sure as my name is Boris Carla. Poor Rose French and her last desperate summer. That's the name of our story, Rose's Last Summer. Our principal players are Miss Mary Astor, Mr. Lynn McCarthy, and Miss Helen Quintle. Let me assure you, my friends, this is a thriller. to the other desk sergeant yesterday. I'm Frank Clyde. Oh, yeah. You're the fellow that runs the clinic for boozers. Well, we prefer to call it Rehabilitation Center. Yeah? Well, who are we rehabilitating today? Rose French. She was arrested Tuesday. Rose French. Oh, yeah, here it is. Drunk and disorderly, $200 or 30 days. Well, I finally scraped together the $200. You're too late. Too late? What do you mean? Somebody else has already bailed her out. She's gone.
Rose. Rose, the stars above. Rose, it's me, Annie. Rose, you got company. That water running and all that yowling, she can't hear a thing. What's Rose doing with the road map? What? I don't know. She's packing. Rose? Yeah. You got company. Now don't come out unless you're dressed. Why not? I've kept my figure. Why, Frank. Why, how sweet of you to come and visit an old lady. Whose idea was this? Mine. I'll bet. Did you bring a butterfly net with you? Oh, Rose. Or were you looking for this? The best, the very best. I used to buy it by the case. Glasses, Annie, glasses. Haven't you caused enough commotion? Commotion? You'd think this was Russia, not California. Come on, Annie, you don't want to drink it out of the bottle, do you? All right now, young man, let's talk about you. Just what are you doing here at this time of night? I was passing by and I saw your light on. Mm. I said to myself, I must see Rose French right now, this minute. Couldn't wait. That's right. You dear sweet boy. You know, I'm awfully glad I went to your clinic. It's been a rare experience knowing you, Frank. I'm crazy about you, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we a pair, bless you. You did keep me from going over the edge once. But there's nothing wrong now, not a thing in the world. I don't believe you. Now, come on, tell me about it. Oh, if I were any younger, I'd grab you so fast. Now, Rose. Well, I would. No, please believe me, Frank. There's nothing the matter. I'm just happy, that's all. I've got a job. A, a job? job? Well, what's so startling about that? I've made a fortune in my time. I supported three husbands. No, only two. Haley Dalloway supported me. The only trouble was he wanted to change me, too. You're going back to Hollywood. Oh, not a chance. <laughs> Hollywood couldn't meet my price, darling. Now, what is it then? What sort of a job? Well, it's a, it's a sort of a housekeeper. Very good job. Is this on the level? Couldn't be leveler. But I think I'll hang on to this room as a sort of a pied-à-terre, a hole in the ground to you. Rose, really? Which reminds me, I owe you two weeks back rent. And? A month in advance. Is that satisfactory? Oh, yes, indeed. Rose, I just don't understand. Neither do I. Where is this job? California. The good old USA. Will you stop being childish? We want to know where you're going. I'll keep in touch. I'll buy you a steak dinner one of these days. Oh, come on, you two. Don't be so serious. I thought you'd bust your buttons with joy at getting rid of me. Come on, now, drink up. Here's to the job. No, I've got a better one. Here's to independence. I know a better one still, to Rose French. Can't believe it. Just can't believe it. remains in the same state. From the town of La Mesa, California, comes news of the sudden death of one-time screen star, Rose French. She was found dead in the garden of a couple who say they did not know Miss French or have any connection with her. Although the demise seems of natural causes, police are making the usual investigation. Miss French was once married to Haley Dalloway, the well-known industrialist. From the eastern seaboard comes a story about a man who tried to prove Mr. Jackson, please tell the skipper to hoist anchor. Put into port right away. Oh, and also radio my travel agent. I want an airline reservation for La Mesa, California, immediately. People die every day, Mr. Klein. But she was perfectly well when I last saw her. 
When was that? Eight days ago in Los Angeles. You suspect murder? I didn't say that. Police surgeon's preliminary report says she died of natural causes. But what was she doing in that garden? What was the name of the family who lived there? Uh, Goodfield, Willard Goodfield. He just moved in with his wife and mother. Well, what was she doing there? Just passing by, it seems. Garden gate was open. She sat down to rest. And he found her body by the bench, her suitcase beside her. Well, she said she was going to a job. It must have been in that neighborhood. No, we checked the whole district. Nobody knows anything about her. Mr. Clyde, I'm afraid you're just going to have to face the facts as they are. Haley Dalloway. You two know each other? Mr. Dalloway, I feel as if I've known you for a long time. I'm Frank Clyde, a friend of Rose's. Oh, how'd you do? You go to the morgue? Yes, I, I did. Uh, she was still wearing my ring. After all these years, still wearing my ring. So, Rose was a patient of yours, was she? For a while. I always felt it wasn't Rose that couldn't adjust to the world. It was the world that couldn't adjust to Rose. You, uh, you liked her, eh? Very much. So did I. There were times when she made my life a hell, but I liked her. I was pretty hard on her, I'm afraid. She had to conform or else, well, she wouldn't or couldn't. So, uh, so I lost her, of course. You never saw her again? No, not until today. I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe she was dead. Mr. Dalloway, I'd like to see where she died. My car's over here. <laughs> About 20 years. I never married again. I was wondering about that. I was on the verge of it several times, but after all, who could follow her? I wish you could hear you say that. Yes, so do I. This must be it. The smoke of a bench. So lonely here. You'd think no one was here. They probably keep this end of the house closed up. Oh, no. She should never have died like this, not Rose. She should have been surrounded by people. Mr. Dalloway. Try not to let them see you, but take a look up at that corner window. I understand you rented the place you're now living in. Yes, we rented it for two months. We've been in it a month. Where is your permanent residence? In San Francisco. Did you know the deceased? <laughs> no, I told the police that I'd never seen her before. Then you didn't recognize her as Rose French? Well, the name Rose French meant nothing to me. I seldom go to the movies, and uh, she was before my time. Then no member of your family saw anything at all, hmm? I'm telling you, we saw nothing or we heard nothing. Not until I found the body. Then I telephoned the police immediately. Well, my, my mother-in-law, I'm afraid, is a very difficult woman. Then you have nothing to add to the testimony of your husband? Nothing. But I assure you, it's been a most unpleasant experience finding a dead body in the corner of your garden. Dr. Severn, you performed an autopsy on the body of the deceased. I did. Would you tell us, please, what brought about her death? Coronary thrombosis. She died almost instantly. As a matter of fact, her death was long overdue. Oh? Why do you say that? Her heart was badly damaged, almost twice its normal size. 
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. We find the deceased Rose French to have died from natural causes due to a weak heart and overexertion. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Court is dismissed. Willette, is that you? Yes, Mother. Bring me my cup of tea and tell me how things went. Yes, Mother, in just a moment. I need a drink. You're drinking too much, Willett. That's my business. And mine. I want to send flowers to the funeral tomorrow. Flowers? Yes. It's the least we can do, isn't it? I'll go, darling. You relax. Well, yes, I understand. The only thing is... Oh, will it? This is Mr. Clyde and Mr. Dalloway. We saw them at the inquest. How do you do? Yes, I remember. Uh, for some reason, they seem to want to talk to your mother. My mother? Why? We saw her looking out the window. We thought perhaps she might have noticed something. Will it? Who's down there? Will it? Yes, Mother. It's a gentleman named Mr. Dalloway who wishes to speak to you. Never heard of him. Send him up anyway. But, Mother... You heard me. Send him up. Very well, Mother. Uh, would you wait here, please? Ethel, you'd better fix Mother's tea. This yes, way, Mr. Dear. Dalloway, please. Don't worry about me. If you'll excuse me, then. Would you come in, please? Mother, this is Mr. Haley Dalloway. He was at the inquest. He used to be married to Rose French. How do you do, Mrs. Goodfield? How do you do? Sit down. Well, thank you. Oh, stop hovering, Willett. You know I don't like it. I'm perfectly capable of conducting a conversation by myself. I'm sorry, Mother. Your tea will be up directly. Now, what can I do for you? Mrs. Goodfield, is there anything at all you can tell me? Anything about my former wife's death? What makes you think I can? I don't know. I, perhaps I... Perhaps I thought you might have seen something from this window here. I just can't bear to think of her dying out there, alone. Now, for an actress, that must have been a hardship. Did you divorce Rose French? Yes. Did you have reason to? Yes, I thought so at the time. We didn't get along. Well, then why this great interest? Why this morbid concern? Well, maybe like Frank Clyde, I, I feel guilty about her. Who's Frank Clyde? A friend of hers. Where? So she had friends. That's interesting in itself. Those people seldom do. Rose may have had her faults, but meanness wasn't one of them. Sit down, sit down. Please, sit down. You know, I rather like you. At least you have spirit. Tell me, do you know the sweet Marie doll? No, I, I can't say that I do. You would if you'd had children. It was a beautiful doll. We made a fortune on it once. Mr. Dalloway, I'm afraid I'll... You'll have to go. There's... There's nothing I can tell you. Mother Goodfield. Get this man out of here. I'm, I'm tired. Excuse me. 
There we are, dear. I'm sorry, Mr. Dalloway. Just a moment. Who's paying for that woman's funeral? I am, of course. Huh. More fool you. Thank you, dear. Ah, nice and hot. You still haven't explained this map. There's nothing to explain. It's a perfectly ordinary road map. We used it while we were traveling. Mr. Dalloway, I found this map burned in the fireplace. Rose had one just like it. I saw it in a room. So what does that prove? It proves she was here in this house. Are you out of your mind? You can get those maps at any gas station. Are you sure it's the same one? No, he isn't. Yes, I'm sure. It had the same markings. Well, let me see it. No, this is too much. Questioning, hounding. For three days now, I haven't had a moment's peace. But this is the last straw. I've had all I can take. What are you afraid of, Mr. Goodfield? Gentlemen, I think you'd better leave before we call the police. Would you go through the pockets of these dresses? Well, uh, Frank, I, uh, I must admit I, I haven't the steam I used to have. I'm sorry you're tired, Mr. Dalloway, but we must go over every inch of this room. Yes, I suppose so. Well, just exactly what are we looking for? I don't know. There must be something. Something will tie Rose in with that house. If we find something besides a map, then we'll know. You uh, really think that those people what reason would they have to harm her? Mr. Dalloway, I can only go by the facts. That map is the same map that I saw in this room. If it wasn't, why did they burn it? If it wasn't, why did that Willett Goodfield get so jittery and so angry? Yes, well, that attitude was peculiar, I must admit. And yet, you know, they, uh, they sent such lovely flowers to the funeral. Exactly what I mean. And why did they send flowers, and such expensive ones? The funeral of someone who meant nothing to them. Is it because they felt guilty about something? Uh, this is all so circumstantial, so, uh, so tenuous. Would you call this tenuous, Mr. Dalloway? Oh, what is it? I didn't want to upset you. I got this this afternoon. It's the last electrocardiogram taken of Rose's heart, taken by the clinic doctor seven months ago. Does that look like the chart of a woman with a badly damaged heart? But Frank, uh, I don't know about these things. Well, look at the rhythm, the pattern of the heart action. You heard the coroner's testimony. Coronary thrombosis, enlarged heart. Now, Dr. Lewis assured me there was no evidence of such a condition in that cardiogram. But uh, could it have changed so, so rapidly? I don't know. I don't think so. You know what I think? I think those people killed Rose. I think they lured her up there to La Mesa with a promise of a job. Somehow, I don't know how, they made it look like she had a heart condition. Maybe some drug. But why, Frank? Why? I don't know, but I'm... doodle like this while talking on the phone. See the word La Mesa? Yes, but she knew she was going there. Well, look at the way she doodled the word good four times and each time with a capital letter. That could have subconsciously meant the name Goodfield. Yes, it's possible, I suppose. Well, that does it. La Mesa, Goodfield. That ties them together before she ever left here. Well, I'm going to the police. No, no, Frank. No, don't do that. This, uh, this isn't enough. That doodle could just mean what the word says, good. I'm just an indication that she was happy about getting a job. 
Well, suppose we took a run up to San Francisco and looked into their background. That's where they're from. They still have a home there up on Knob Hill. They also have a doll factory. Good. We'll go to San Francisco. It's worth a try anyway. Mm. so I took the liberty. Well, lunchtime. They're all out to lunch. <laughs> I always have mine right in here. Just fruit. Best thing for you. I have John Richards. I called for an appointment. Oh, yes. Toy Digest. Well, sit down, sit down. You're interested in doing an article on old Horace Goodfield, aren't you? Well, not exactly. It's a symposium. Well, they told me at the doll factory that you were the executor of Horace Goodfield's estate. I thought you might fill me in. Nobody knew more about old Horace Goodfield than I did. <laughs> oh, what is it you want to know? Well, first, uh, when did he die? Hmm. About 15, 16... No, 15 years ago. That's it. Five years after he created the Sweet Marie doll. Oh, yes, about that doll. I understand it made him a lot of money. Millions. Mm -hmm. mm. Excuse me. Lunch time for them, too, you know. One, two, three. There. Enjoy your lunch. What kind of a man was Mr. Goodfield? A genius. Oh, he invented all kinds of toys. Of course, he was rather eccentric. Hadn't been for all his money, you'd have called him a nut. Uh, and the rest of the family, what were they like? Well, Horace didn't pay much attention to his family. Tell you the truth, he didn't like his family very well. Especially his son, Willet. You see, uh, Willet never invented anything. Well, he left them his money. As the executor of the state, I can't discuss that. I see. Well, where is Mrs. Goodfield? I thought I might like to talk to her. Oh, she's away somewhere, traveling. Well, you've uh, given me a very interesting sidelight on Mr. Goodfield. Thank you, Mr. Sturgis. Well, you're welcome, Mr. Uh... Richards. Oh, yes. Huh. I'd like to see a copy of the article when it's published. I'll send you a copy. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> place a person-to-person -person call. Willett Goodfield, La Mesa, California. Asking questions about us? Well, you didn't tell him anything, did you? Now, what would I tell him? It was just that after he left, I thought he had asked some very peculiar kind of questions for a trade paper writer. As a matter of fact, he seemed a little peculiar himself. What did he look like? I thought so. Frank Clyde. Well, he's a friend of Rose French's. He didn't believe the findings at the inquest. I am careful. We thought we'd covered everything. This means more to us than it does to you. All right. I'll keep you informed. Clyde? Yes. He's up in San Francisco checking. 
What are we going to do? Don't panic, Willett. We're past the time limit now. We'll, we'll just have to end it a few days sooner than we planned. Ethel, I, I don't mean to be weak. I know you don't, baby. Just trust me, that's all. Just leave everything to me. Mother Goodfield. Mother, what are you doing up? Well, now that's a stupid question if I ever heard one. I got bored, that's all. Well, I did. Now, darling, you know it's better for you to stay upstairs. You're much more comfortable there. But I'm bored, Ethel. Go to your room. Well, that's the girl. We'll be up to talk to you later. Don't bother. Neither one of you is very amusing. paying you for to be me well, I'll look more like you when I get this wig adjusted still isn't right across the forehead I'll try the walk again no 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 that's not right you still haven't got it oh well, I'm doing the best I can you're doing nothing of the sort it's not enough that you look like me that's only part of it. You must be like me, inside. Well, that's a big order. I thought you were an actress. I am. At least I was. Because of a pretty face? No. All right, let's try it again. A little slower, I couldn't walk that fast. That's more like it. Now, say something. Say something to my son. Um, that's not very bright of you, is it, will it? Did you ever try using a fraction of your brain? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it, isn't it? <laughs> yes. What I can't understand is how will it happen to recognize me on the street. How could anyone help but recognize Rose French? Of course, I always resembled you. I was not as beautiful, but I looked like Rose French. Yes, I can see where you would, especially if you darkened your hair a little. That's it. Remember, if I should die, darken my hair. Oh, Mother, please. Ethel? I'll remember. Yes, it's a, it's a miracle that we found you, Rose. But you, you saw the maps that I gave you. You know where we went. Oh, we've been traveling since February, looking for someone to pass for me. But you did find her. Yes. Maybe just in time. Don't talk like that, Mother. You know you'll live to be 90. I don't want to live to be 90. I just want to live long enough to be sure you get the money. Oh, Mother, please. This whole thing is just insane. You were always incompetent. You and your father. You always were incompetent. You and your father. Is that the way I sound? Yes, I guess it is. All right, Rose, that's enough. Mrs. Goodfield is tired. Yes, I think I am. All of a sudden. I'll put you to bed, dear. No, no, wait a minute. There's something else. Something, something I thought of this morning. It can wait. If anything should happen, and Rose has to take over, you must never let down. 
Not even when you're alone. You must call her mother, and you must call her mother Goodfield. Never think of her as Rose French. Do you understand? Rose, before we say goodnight, will you do me a favor? Put the wig on again. Oh, sure. When I tried it on this morning, it was terribly tight, but I managed to stretch it a little. There we are. Incredible. Wait a moment. Well, it's unnerving, isn't it? What do you see? Rose? I see two dreadful old women. Dreadful old women. I'm going home. I'm a fraud and a cheat, and so are you. I can't go on with it any longer. I, I won't. I'm afraid you'll have to. Now, look, I don't want to cause any trouble, but I'm ashamed and, and, and I'm scared. I want to be myself again. And who is that? Who is that? Why, Rose French, of course. You can't be Rose French. Rose French is dead. No. She's dead and buried. She doesn't exist anymore. Oh. I'm a realist. So was your mother. Do you know what she said to me? She said, Rose must die as me. If I die as Rose French, Rose must die as Mrs. Horace Goodfield. It was awful when mother died. Trying to make her look younger. Dyeing her hair so she'd look like Rose. I know, dear. I couldn't go through it again. I'll never forget when we carried her down. I just couldn't go through it again. You won't have to. Once we get Rose to San Francisco, you can leave everything to me. Just don't fail me now, darling. Don't fail your mother. All right. When do we do it? Tonight. Now, miss, just a moment. I'd like to have a copy of this page, please, as soon as possible. luck up on Knob Hill? No. I watched their house from noon till four. Nobody showed. I even tried to get inside. But a police car came around, and I figured I'd better skip that gambit. Well, I think I found something in huh? the uh, newspaper files. Look at this. 
A copy of Goodfield's obituary in the Times 15 years ago. Mrs. Horace Goodfield. She was when her husband patterned the sweet Marie doll after her face. She's a dead ringer for Rose. Of course, but uh, look farther down. The part about the will. Now here, Frank. And it is rumored that the eccentric millionaire left an eccentric will, leaving his fortune in trust to his widow. It becomes hers only if she reaches 65 years of age. Otherwise, the entire estate will go to the Panassas Health Food Foundation. If she dies before 65, the family loses a whole shebang. Right. See, that should be just about now. Yeah, I had her date of birth. Let's see. Oh, here it is. May 29th. Now, she was 65 just two days ago. You realize what this could mean? That must have been Mrs. Goodfield they found in the garden. Ridiculous. Are you trying to tell me that that old woman in bed upstairs was Rose French? The woman I was married to? It had to be. They must have hired Rose to take her place so they'd get the money, even if Mrs. Goodfield died before she reached 65. A fantastic scheme. But... But, Frank, that would mean only one thing, that Rose is alive. As of now, but they don't need her any longer. Today is May 31st. Come on, let's get back to La Mesa at once. But my car's in the garage down the street. I just wanted to say I, I'm sorry I blew my top yesterday. I, I didn't mean it. I know you didn't, Rose. We both lost our heads. And for the same reason, we've been under a great strain. Well, you and Mr. Goodfield particularly. It was inexcusable of me to act the way I did. Can you forgive me? If you can forgive me. Oh, you know I can. You've been magnificent, Rose. You know, this is nice, our, our talking like this. It's the first time we've really talked together. Then we're friends? You bet. That's wonderful. After all, we are so close to the end. That's right. Just one more day and you'll be free as the air. Yes, I'm going to New York and I've made up my mind I'm going to change my name and you'll never hear of me again. I brought you a present, Rose. Oh, glory be. I know you've missed your little nip, and I see no harm in it now. Well, this is good stuff, too, you know. I used to buy it by the case. $500 was nothing for a party. Well, just help yourself. Well, you are a dear girl. Don't be silly. Let's just call it a uh, peace offering. <laughs> Bless you. Did you give her? Enough, apparently. There we are. Now, come right up here. Good oh, feel. That's right. That's fine. Now we've got you here. Oh. You force your way into Goodfield's house on that kind of evidence. If you're wrong, you'll have one whale of a suit on your hands. Well, let's not stand here arguing. Let's get up there. Well, suit or no suit, are you coming with us, Captain, or do we go without you? I'll have to wait for my relief. He's doing a few minutes. 
Wait a minute. Where are we going? We're just taking you downstairs for a change, oh, dear. No. Come on. Oh, she's passed out completely. Good. It's all right, I've got it. Get the door open. Here we go. You can manage alone. I could have managed alone from the very beginning. Let me go, will it? You know how I hate to have you fuss over me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. We can't let her get away now. We lose everything. Open the gate. Let's go home. Oh, oh thank you. Mm. 